Hello, everyone. I'm Ernie Reynolds, which doesn't matter very much, but I'm a friend of BG's, and I was honored to have the opportunity to speak tonight. And I prepared comments. I realized that I'd never thought of it, but that I was kind of um, a member of BG's very own uh, Rat Pack. Um, she attracted uh, doctors and publishers, engineers, uh, even a tree guy, and of course, musicians of all stripes. She knew how to make everyone feel welcome. She knew how to make everyone feel that they were interesting. And she had the ability to engage on many subjects and a lifelong intellectual curiosity. I never witnessed this daughter from Cave City, Kentucky in a conversation or a circumstance that she didn't and couldn't gracefully meld herself into. Other people probably will and certainly can speak more to her phenomenal music career than I can, but in a couple of minutes I want to tell you about two aspects of BG's life that many of you know that didn't necessarily involve the piano. First, she was a terrific neighbor and citizen in this, her beloved Franklin. She and Billy knew exactly where they lived and they could see beyond the present, which is a gift. They could also see into the past and its value. And more importantly, they could see into the future. They believed, like hopefully all of us, that this is a magical place. And her support for historic preservation here in Franklin, including this facility, as well as her many other generous contributions to our downtown neighborhood, will have sustaining value. Finally, I want to tell you something that you probably know that BG was a closeted librarian. In fact, I always thought that she was just sort of on permanent loan from the Western Kentucky English Department. <laughs> um, we had many conversations over bourbons that range from the Leuven Brothers to Hemingway or from Flannery O'Connor to Bobby Gentry. BG got how an author can manage multiple POV shifts in harmony, just like the Lubins, or how a couple of short clipped sentences can evoke tension through tone and pace on the page, just as ivory keys and stringed instruments and percussions can interpret a song's lyrics. She was one of those rare people that had a passport through artistic languages, like she got that those 26 letters in our alphabet are <clears throat> no more powerful as a mute Steinway's 88 keys until master takes charge. Not too long before she left us, BJ, BG gave me a thesaurus she thought I could use. <laughs> those of you who don't know, I'm an English professor uh, at Florida State University, so <laughs> state school, what can I say? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure if it was a comment on my vocabulary, kind of like you're not sure when someone you didn't ask offers breath mints. <laughs> but th this thesaurus is a hardback door stopper of a book with over 200,000 words or phrases carved out from those 26 letters. But even with all those words as ingredients, it's really at the end of the day only a dictionary and it reads, if you sit down and go page by, page by page, like a phone book, until someone, some master, plays those words into meaningful language, a song's verses, an evocative poem, a work of prose, something well-written with significant action. BG lived her life doing just that. I, make, I mean, making meaningful, significant art as a master of the Steinway's 88 and the language is 26. It's been said that when we move on, the adjectives and adverbs that are attached to us will go away too in people's memories that will only be nouns and verbs. 
and I'm sure everyone here could associate several nouns or verbs to BG that would make them smile tonight. I put down on page here a few of mine. I start with savant, star, artist, reader, writer, philanthropist, preservationist, advocate, fighter, social reformer, and animal lover. But my favorite by far that I think of when I think of BG is friend. Rest in peace, BG.